This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Good midday, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTR Car Guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on KTAR News. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, I guarantee we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And you can also text us at 411-923. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we are bringing back fact or fiction. We have not done that in a long time. You just want to push that button. I want to hear that. my voice. <laughs> fact or fiction. <laughs> Open phones and text and broken stuff. It amazes me how people put up with broken stuff on their car. I had a car in my shop this week. A lady came in. She needed a transmission repair. And she said, oh, yeah, by the way, my door handle's broken on the inside, so you got to roll the window down to get out of the car. And I'm like, wow, how long has it been like that? Two years. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'm surprised her window is not worn out from rolling the window down to open the door on the outside. (laughs) It's going to be cheaper to fix the door handle than the window. It absolutely is. Yeah, but you're right, Dave. There's... I don't know if people understand that that our shops will fix these little things. They, they, Not a big deal. They they really don't have to live with them. And we we did a little survey around the station here this morning, and and, uh, and I know there's certain things. I don't have much on my car right now except for the broken taillight from a couple years ago. <laughs> With the one you got the red <laughs> the red duct tape lined over the taillight, you know, well, so you don't get pulled over. Well, at least on mine, it's a clear lens, and then in the side is the colored lens. So, you know, I'm just waiting for the water to hit the bulb, and once it does, I'll I'll replace it. But, but the again, I don't think they understand. Like the visor, that's one of my big ones. You get in the car, and the visor is supposed to go up and, and hug the headliner, but it either falls down. So I always think, is this thing going to be like a, a – Oh, a, it's going to cut your head off like when a, you go, <laughs> slam yeah, on the brakes. <laughs> yeah, you slam on the brakes, and that visor is going to catch you right in the bridge of the nose and, and scalp you or top your – you know. Well, I do have a good fix for that because we have people come in all the time with this broken stuff, and I can't drive your car because every time I give it gas, the visor falls <laughs> down. I can't see where I'm going. So I'll take some double-sided Velcro tape, put some up on the headline, no, 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 some no, down no. on the visor, no, no, <laughs> and just so I can make it through the test drive because that is the most annoying thing in the world to me. Are, are you the guy with the generator strapped to the trunk and the 110-volt the <laughs> AC unit plugged in the back window for I, the— I am that guy, and I'll even go so far. As if, I, if I'm if i driving their car and their AC vent keeps falling down, I can't get any cold air, I'll go get a clothespin and I'll stick it in there just to hold that. Th- oh. AC vents. I'm tired of broken AC vents. Well, the other thing on the visor is the clip where, you know, you want to turn it to the side so the east or west sun or whatever you're doing, it's not – so you accelerate, that thing comes back and hits you in the head. Those clips are like <laughs> – those clips are like $6 and we don't even charge to put them in. Yeah. I mean, you might – I think my daughter could probably do it, you know? Well, if you um, if you got a good shop you've been going to – just lean on a little bit. Say, hey, you know that visor keeps falling down in front of my face. Do you think you could take care of that for me? What about the rear view mirror that's kind of got a like a, a duct tape saddle holding it up instead of the, you know, they make kits and you can scrape that off the window. <laughs> Piece of cake. We 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 do all that stuff for you, Dave. What else do we come up with today? Oh, you know what? It's uh, and everyone can instantly think of it. My question was, hey, what's broken on your car that annoys the crap out of you, but you're probably never going to get fixed? And everyone had an answer. So I heard things like, you know, you know that when the window, the tinting gets all bubbled up. Oh God, that and they me. just live with that. You know, call the mobile guy, get him out there, and get that thing fixed so you can see people. You're going to cause a ten car pileup <laughs> because you can't see through your window. Or, yeah, it, or it's. Yeah, yeah, like the mobile. There, you could Craigslist anybody. You could find a mobile guy that'll just get done while you're at lunch. You know? Mike Russell's is the headliner because he drives a he drives a sedan, and he's jamming fishing poles in there. And and, he, <laughs> and when you pull the fishing pole out, and I I tugged his headliner out a little bit. I didn't tell him like whoops, that treble hook caught on the headliner. But the headliner, you get in the car and it's it's hitting you on the head. I I got in one time and it looked in a car, not Mike's car. I, I don't think his is this bad yet. But, <laughs> but you know, you ever see a map like in a, a delivery room or something? It's got, uh, or you know, a, a route map maybe, and, and and it's got pins all in it. Say, oh, or, yeah. uh, the little colored thumbtacks. That's what I'm looking for. All over the map to show where maybe a store is or some delivery route. 
I got in this car one time, and there must have been a hundred thumbtacks <laughs> <laughs> holding that thing up. I've seen people take like the staple gun, like for the Christmas lights at Christmas. It you was kind of psychedelic. It might have been one of these deadhead guys because they're all different colors, you know, <laughs> holding up. Hey, but at least he fixed it. It wasn't. Some of those are hanging down on oh, your head, man. and and. Uh, uh, and, and annoying power windows. That was one of them, but I don't think that's annoying. Well, that, that I kind of think that's a safety issue, at least if it's on the driver's door. Oh, on the driver's door, yeah. yeah. And if your car ever goes off a bridge into water, don't try and open the door. You're not gonna be able to get it open. So just roll the window down first. That DC motor will run in water. Roll it down so it equalizes. Then you can get the door open. That's a little safety tip. Is, is, for... that, is that one? <laughs> okay. That's you said. You're not gonna be safe without a power window in the driver's door. You know the other one that's. Uh, Again, these are just little things that we can fix in the shop. You're in for your oil change. You notice your your map. You call it map light or your dome light or one. Oh, of your dome interior, light was another one I heard here at the one station. One of your interior lights are burned out. I mean, those bulbs are two and a half dollars. You know, two bucks, three bucks to put a put a bulb in there, and you don't. <laughs> They're just <laughs> annoying things that you just continue to live with. But rattles, I personally hate rattles. Oh Some people can live with rattles. How do you live with that rattle? I don't know. It's just I don't even re- I don't even see it anymore. I can't get in someone's car and not hear the rattles. People don't like me riding in their car because I point <laughs> out everything that is wrong with it. You know, this is like my brother. I, his differential bearing. If he's listening, I you know I get in his car and I'm like, man, your differential is making a lot of noise. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, you should get that. This thing had twenty thousand miles on it. Get it in there for warranty. He doesn't do it. So the next time I'm in his car, we're driving to Tucson, and, and it's, it's got 75,000 miles on it, and this differential is just screaming. I'm like, can you hear that noise yet? He's like, no. <laughs> it's been there the whole time. Of course I hear it. <laughs> he could have had it fixed for free under <laughs> warranty, but he just, he just lived with it and ignored it and just turned the radio up even louder. So broken door handles, power windows, window tint, headliners. Here's the other one. The the uh, we see it a lot at my shop on Volkswagens and Audis and whatever the little LCD display either on the window mm-hmm. or on the window duh. on the stereo on the stereo or the instrument cluster or even the AC control unit you know you don't have to replace that whole thing we can fix that stuff and a little uh, of those odds and ends and are available and they're yeah. not a big deal and people I think people when they come to the shop they hate to ask but I can't live with a a mirror missing off the right side of my car. And I can some under- people they drive like that, <laughs> and I can understand people asking. You know, you ever get that sometimes dumb question like, "Do you guys do this? You guys, you guys do oil changes?" <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, most, yeah. most shops. Are- <laughs> You're as you standing in front of the Valvoline sign, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or, or you know. So asking us if we can fix that dome light or that visor, that's really not a dumb question. Like, do you do tires as we're leaning up against a rack of tires? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> like that's a, so definitely ask the shop, can you take care of this? And, and uh, Not it, a big deal. You don't have to learn with those things. But as the car ages, you know, that's how you end up with a car that's a jalopy after five years. As little odds and ends break, the visor breaks, you're like, ah, darn, the visor's broken. The stereo knob, you know, the black colorings come off of it. It looks like garbage. All those things add up. It's kind of like my neighbor's house. Anytime anything <laughs> breaks, he fixes it. That's one neighbor. Across the street is another neighbor who doesn't fix anything, and it just compiles and compiles and compiles. And the it, first it, weed turns the second and weed. And, then the... <laughs> and it just keeps going, and pretty pretty soon you have a car you're not proud of, and you don't want to fix, and you, you take a big loss on it, and you're going to spend... Some of these people commute an hour to work you know, every day. Hour there, hour back. Two hours in that baby, you better you Enjoy might as well it. like it. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah, why did you want to be miserable? And I got this damn car and this stupid visor or whatever that drives me nuts. So t- take care of it. They just seem like little odds and ends, and a lot of that stuff can be fixed. And there is a, there is a turning point on your car where yeah, you know what? You're gonna if you got a screwdriver jammed in for the shifter for the transmission, you know. What if you're gonna go on a date? You know, and you're like, oh hey uh, hey baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to slide across the driver's side because that passenger side door doesn't work. Now, I don't know if that's a trick to just get a little closer. Or... Well, when I met my wife, she thought I was real polite and that I was opening a door for her. It was just that passenger door. There was a certain touch to it, you know, to get that thing open. She's like, Babe, why don't you open the door for me? Oh, I got it fixed. No, you didn't do it. <laughs> exactly. There's no, there's no special trick. Or like you said, Dave, you loan out your car. Oh, hey, just whatever you do, don't touch that screwdriver that's jammed down in between. I think that's, the... a, that's a redneck joke. You might be a redneck joke if you got a list of instructions just to borrow my truck. So if you got something annoying on your car that you want fixed and you want to know how to get it fixed, give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. We can talk about anything on your car. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTAR car guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio.
There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASE Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30 month free replacement and a six year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that'll help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are KTR Car Guys, and we're talking about annoying things on your car that you just choose to live with. Don't have to. Don't have to. No, they can be fixed. (laughs) You know, I'm reading one of the texts here. I have a 74 Chevy 3 on the tree, and it keeps popping out of second gear. What do I do about it? Well, that's one of those annoying things you can live with. Just hold it in a second gear. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't take it to drive the transmission, right? <laughs> can My, you fix that? Yeah. Do you want to? No. No. <laughs> My buddy uh, had one of those. I, I think it was a 74, too. Big, long, white shit. We used to call it the cowpoke truck. You know, the steering wheel, you'd have to turn like almost a full revolution to go left. So if you're driving down the freeway, well, we didn't drive on the freeway. There was no freeways around Phoenix, you know, then Back in, in, the day. In, in the 80s. But just to go down the road, I mean, that hand is always going left, full circle, right, so full circle, just to make a little adjustment in that three on the tree. What the heck is that? I never even... You know, every now and then we get one in, and we have to remember, how in the heck do we adjust those shifters for that 74 three-speed on the tree? And a lot of times it's getting the steering column rebuilt, and there's a couple steering column people in town that can do that. We had a, uh, speaking of the three on the tree one time, we had a, a new kid in the shop a long time ago. I'm talking 15 years ago. He went out and starts a car up and just, <laughs> just grabs the handle and jams it in. So that, It was before his time, right? He yeah, had no idea what yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. Well, up for this segment, we've got Neil from Scottsdale and 2006 Mustang GT. Oh, his wife's 2006 Mustang GT. What can we help you with, Neil? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, it's my wife's car. been a great car, and I changed the spark plugs on it, uh, just, you know, let's say a month ago. And... Um, I've had a question ever since I've changed, and this is the first time I've ever changed a spark plug that was the coil style with the electrode going down to the plug. Yeah, coil on plug. Coil on plug. And the, what, what surprises me is the coil going down to the plug tip, when it goes over the top of the plug tip, it is not tight and, and um, in no other way to explain it. It doesn't snap on like a normal spark plug electrode. Mm-hmm. It just sort of sits there. Well, does, does yeah. not seem like a very good electrical connection to me. 
Well, a lot of those have a... Now, is the car running okay? Is there any other problems? Oh, yeah, no, that, that's no it's fine. Okay. And I compared it to the original OEM plugs I took out, uh, and that's, that's exactly how it fits. And I was very surprised that it, um, that it, that it doesn't have a direct contact. And they were all like that, right? Yes. Okay. So I, I don't think it's a problem. I haven't really paid attention to that much, but they do... Some of those do clip on. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can actually feel like a... You know, and, and, and go in, especially when you're pushing the coil down. But a lot of them are, there's just a very long spring in there that goes down, you know, if it makes the contact in the coil. And and instead of having a spark plug wire, there is actually that long replaceable boot. Yeah, on, you can on, simply on the replace coil. the boot, yeah. not the coil. Yeah, yeah, if they, when they go bad, because those, believe it or not, those little boots do get burned through the side. The, you know, electricity's lazy. It wants to get to ground as fast as possible. So if it can find a way, it'll, it'll go through that boot. But that must be, I've never really thought about that, but it must be a good connection. But it, I've seen those, it's a, I mean, like two inch long spring, and it just, it pushes on there. It doesn't have to probably clip on. It just, if they're all like that, I'm not worried about it. And I can't say I've pushed one of those on any time in the recent, you know, I've had them come across my desk all the time, but I haven't pushed one on. Well, and not on the Mustang, but the Ford products, you get them in your shop all the time. All Dave. the Pe- time. People think they have a transmission problem and they've, they've got a coil issue. So, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it on the Mustang, just. Enjoy it and keep on driving it. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. We are going to go with Tom in Scottsdale on a 1998 Toyota. 4x4. Hey, guys, I, I, thank you for taking the call. I apologize for being a horse. Yeah. Um, I got something that's extremely annoying. I blew a head gasket. Oh, right. Okay, I've got, uh, well, my question is, I've got 260,000 miles on a truck. I bought it brand new in 1988 from uh, Scott Toyota. It's got new paint, no rust on it whatsoever. The upper end on this 3.0 liter V6 has been rebuilt twice. Um, the lower end has never been rebuilt, so it's got about 260 on the lower end. Do I rebuild the upper end of this car, or do I just go now, with the... Uh, did you re- say, you said you had a little horse, and it's got 260,000 miles on it. I think you should should shoot it. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> my voice is hoarse. But. Okay. Well, now, when you say you blew up the engine or whatever happened to the engine, what, what actually happened to the engine? What do you mean by you blew it up? Well, what happened was the uh, hood came down on the uh, radiator cap, and I was driving to Cass Grand, and what happened was it let the, let the I heard it hissing, it let all the, the you know, all the pressure out. The the needle spiked to hot, pulled over, it was fine, got into the shop, and when they, they said, hey, this is what happened, the, the pressurizer's all right, but the uh, uh, your hood, where we can see on top of the hood, is hitting on that cap right, right. at high speed. But what happened to the engine is what I meant, not not the circumstances leading up. Okay, the, What the, do you mean by gasket. blown up? Okay, the head so- gasket, the head gasket shot. And I'm shooting uh, antifreeze, big white clouds of antifreeze out the back tailpipe. So I guess my question is, at that many miles, since the lower end has never been done, but the upper end's been done twice in 25 years, do I do an upper end on it, or do I just go ahead and uh, get a uh, rebuilt long block and just have them throw a full, you know, re- long block rebuilt in here and just leave this, give them this core engine? Are you doing this work yourself? or you have- No. Okay. It'd be a shop. Okay, here's what I, I mean. This is an impossible question to answer. There's so much that you have to take in the totality of the whole condition of the vehicle. Based on what you said, it sounds like it's in good shape. But less important than the condition is how bad did this thing overheat? Dave, you've seen them in your shop. You just can smell it. Oh, I mean, yeah. the thing is just cooked. So that's a tough one. I mean, there's there's a lot more thinking that has to go into that, and you need to get the shop to help you think through this process. Is there any water in the oil? Maybe you could have the shop pull an oil sample and have it tested and see what, what's in there. Now, without a pattern, without a couple of prior tests with a baseline that may not tell you that it's necessarily good, you don't have any, any, any comparative analysis, but at least they could tell you, oh gosh, this thing is full of iron or full of bearing material. I don't want to over reduce it, but I'm thinking it's got 270,000 miles on it. It got smoking hot. I mean, you know, it sounds like the needle got hot, all that stuff. Chances are we're already doing a major repair to it anyway. There's a point where we're sewing a new patch on an old pair of jeans. And that's what I think is going on here, where I think we should be. I mean, he's there. He loves the truck. He's going to yeah, keep it for enough. another 300,000 miles. You know, go for it. You know, I would say we're at that time, you know, time one, time two. Okay, we got away with doing head repair, top end stuff. Now it's it's probably time. Yeah, it could go either way if you're going to patch it. And then the next question is you don't want, you know, 
super duper inexpensive discount engine, you know, whatever <laughs> late night television, run and hide because it's not it's not gonna happen. <laughs> this is one of those deals you're gonna spend, you're gonna spend this money taking care of. Oh God, my ears blew up. <laughs> you're gonna spend, thanks, Bree. <laughs> you're gonna spend this money. To take to 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 upgrade this car now. Really think about an asset shop. What else would you do? Are we going to do the motor mounts? We're obviously, going to get a new radiator. But let's make this thing so it doesn't nickel and dime you to death for the next fifty, seventy, a hundred yeah. thousand miles. Let's make it like it's nineteen eighty eight again. You don't necessarily yeah. want to spend the money the first time. You certainly don't want to spend the money the second time. So if you're going to do it, do it right because you're gonna. When you're doing a motor, you definitely get what you pay for. You don't want one that's been uh, bubble gum and shoestring motor overhaul. That's not good for anybody, and you're not going to enjoy the truck. And we want to enjoy this thing. Well, the one thing that you know we got use your construction analogy, Dave, of putting your window in. What else? It, once they give you the estimate, what else would you do if this was your car? You know, we're not always looking for the lowest price. We want the best repair. So, for sure. When we what... come back, we're taking more calls at 602 277 5827. A little bit of fact or, and fiction and anything else you want to talk about. You're listening to Dave and Matt, your KTR car guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun, and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby, owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Swain Palm Trees, Poolside Margaritas, and Lush Championship Golf. Don't waste all your precious time, gas, and money trying to cram a three-day road trip into your Memorial Day weekend this year. Hi, this is Jerry Colangelo inviting you back to 1965 as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Golden Patriot Courses at the historic Wigwam Resort. Our summer celebration kicks off this Memorial Day weekend with Bunker to Bunker, the golf show's throwback with Bunkerville Golf Tournament. The fourth annual stay and play sells out quickly every year for good reason. Great golf, great resort, great values. The two-person scramble is on the world-renowned gold course, loaded with special throwback prizes, awards, and lunch. It even includes a free coupon for a second round of golf, all for just $82. Bring the whole family and enjoy the entire weekend with room night specials starting at just $110 per night. Now that's a holiday value you won't find anywhere else. Proceeds benefit Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Fighter Country Partnership. Space is limited, so register today at Bunker golf.com who can you trust here in the valley to repair your ride this is bumper to bumper radio ktar news on 92.3 fm welcome back to bumper to bumper radio i am matt allen along with my friend sometimes dave riccio depending on the weather it's a nice day today so i guess we can be friends today dave um, talking about things on your car every Saturday at 11, but today we were talking about the annoying things. If you're just joining us, the, you know, the things you live with, the sun visor that falls down, that, you know, is not a big deal to fix. And, and just these tape over the tail light, all the, the goofy stuff that makes your car turn into not the car you're so proud of, but, uh, we've actually got a caller. He's got his annoying thing on his, uh, on his Silverado. So if you want to get involved, you want to text with us, you can do that at 411-923 if you're the shy type. If you want to call with any type of question on your car, maybe it's not about your car, I don't know, trailer or something else, 602-277-5827. Dave, what do you think? Zach, first? Take Zach. We'll go for it. Since he's got an on-topic problem with his 13 Silverado. Zach, what's going on? Hey, it's actually a 12, 2012 Silverado. Um, It's a work truck. 
Um, and it bought it with, you know, I don't know, like 30,000 miles on it, really nothing, nothing major on it, but there's something so annoying about it, and it's just stupid. <laughs> it's, it looks like the guy who owned it before had a 300-pound arm, or he drove with nothing but brass knuckles on his hands at all times, because the steering wheel at like 11 o'clock has been worn down, like he had a fit of road rage every yeah, time. Yeah, he was, he was squeezing the steering wheel instead of ramming somebody. <laughs> Oh, and it, you know, there's that, and then there's you know the little plastic on the sides of the the you know right on the side where you press the horn next to that the little plastic pieces. It looks like they got banged up by a wristwatch or something. I don't know what he did to the steering wheel, but I'm just I've always been afraid to get a, to ask about it because like you know what are they going to replace the entire steering wheel for something so dumb? Well, they so. pro- probably would, but that that is you know what I hate is the car. I never Zach brought it up. Now the steering wheel, you get in it and that thing is like sticky. Gooey. You think you're holding a gummy bear or something? It's the gummy bear. That's the of- first thing I do when I buy a new car is get a steering wheel cover because the thing's going to be like trash. Oh, that's annoying too. Is yeah. clean that thing. But you know what, Zach, on that Silverado, you don't have to buy a brand new steering wheel. You can. I mean, that's something that's perfectly acceptable to get recycled. Uh, you know, salvage yard type of deal. You're not going to get the airbag with it, but you can probably get that whole deal, whole, you know, the assembly. It's got probably got this, the uh, volume controls at the little plastic that's worn out and stuff. Not a big deal to fix it. And you've got to drive this thing every day. Go for it. You know, that's that's the... It's not over the top. I mean, no. I've considered replacing... I hate that. I've got it in cars where literally they're all the way down to the steel bar. Oh, gosh. <laughs> or you can turn it. You know, it's like a throttle. I had to- I had this one customer. He was so narcissistic. <laughs> we, you know, he had this steel on. I mean, the top half between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock was just metal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had one of those? So, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We always try and do something nice for a customer when they get a big repair. So I'm like, well, we get a steering wheel cover. We put some little foam in there for him. So we did all this for the guy and got in there, and he wanted to go road test it before he paid the bill. So I drove it with him. He didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I thought that was like the nicest thing I could do that day. I've had one where that you know it's the kid who thinks he has a race car. Maybe he saw an Indy car race, and it's, the steering wheel's not round. You know, they just chop off. There's nothing between. <laughs> there's nothing between it eleven looks- and two, or whatever time it is. I don't know, seven and three. It's all gone. He's got the. You know, it's like the, the Star Wars handle. Yeah, Remember that yeah, from the exactly. from the video game. Exactly. Well, I was looking at a text here, Matt. He's got a 1995 Honda 2.2 liter with 223,000 miles, failed emissions for NOx which is uh, oxides of nitrogen or something like that. I failed chemistry, so oh. don't get me to say anything. What should I be looking to replace or repair to get my car to pass emissions? And uh, NOx is caused from high cylinder temperatures. Yes. Yeah, so, that, I mean, so NOx is a byproduct of the combustion. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen from if your car is pinging, you, you're going up the grade, maybe – Go sunset point, you hear this rattling on acceleration. That's creating knocks. The timing could be off. There could be carbon problems. Sometimes you just got to take the car out and flog it. <laughs> I mean, just, just run it like a scolded dog. <laughs> <laughs> just just clean that thing up. But also the, the, the Hondas have problems, as a lot of cars do, with the EGR valve passages plugging up. The EGR valve is part of the emission control that helps reduce emissions recirculating or burning exhaust gases, but those get plugged up with carbon and they don't work. Part of that EGR valve's job to do is also cool the cylinders. So I would be looking very hard at the EGR valve and that system in there and uh, maybe do some research online if you're the kind of guy that's fixing your car. But that's what I would be looking at at my shop. We get so many questions about emissions. I'm thinking not next week, but maybe the week after. We can do a show just dedicated to emissions problems. And the rules have changed. So when you bring your car and if it's a 1980 car, completely different than a 1995 car in how we're going to take care of it as far as emissions go. And even a more modern car than that, it's totally different. So well, what kind of car do you have and where do you fit? And then how does the state treat your, your vehicle? And you don't even have to have that disparity between 80 and 1995. There's a huge difference between 1995 and 1996. It's just yeah, you know, this side of the wall. So. Well, it's 95 and a half to be technical. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the first person says whatever loses, I understand. Right? Well, thanks so much for the text in the phone calls. We're going to go with Connor in Scottsdale on a GMC Yukon. How can we help you, Connor? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, quick question. So my back right passenger window, it's uh, one of the windows that has like child safety locks. So it only goes about halfway down when you roll it down all the way. 
And almost a year ago now, my buddy, I think, put too much weight on it. And so now it just drops down. I have to, I have like a manila folder wedged in there to keep the window up. <laughs> but, That's uh, pretty good. I've seen, I've seen clothes seen pins lot, in the yes. air conditioned vents, but a manila yeah. envelope to keep up your window. I know. I mean, I took my family to dinner last night and the folder's like falling on them. So it's just a, it's a nuisance. Um, but I'm, I'm sure they just need to take the door panel off and look at it, but I don't know. If it's the motor or if there's some sort of safety valve that keeps it up, I mean, I have no idea. Now, what you're going to find in there, they're going to pull the door panel off. But, you know, it used to be we used to say, well, we have to take the door panel off and then we can find See out what's wrong yeah, with it. Find out what's wrong in there. But most of the time, now, if you're going to go operate the power window switch, you might hear the motor working. It's doing something, but there's no activity in the, nothing happening with the window. If you hear that, it's probably just the regulator. But a lot of times the regulators come with the motor and everything anyway, so it's the whole nine yards. Just because you replace the regulator doesn't mean you need a motor and vice versa. It's, I think that's a repair is all day long, four or 500 bucks maybe. And Well, that's one of those things, a little bit of home testing that you can do is the old dome light test. You know, where you can, is the motor running? Is it, is it a bad switch? You know, and, and not in this situation. We know we got like a mechanical regulator problem, but you're hitting the button and nothing's happening. Well, do we have a bad motor? Do we have a bad switch? Well, you can hit the button and if the dome, line dims, dome light dims a little bit, hey, we know it's putting power to the motor, so maybe something's happening. So it makes us look, you know, look at it differently. So that's just a little self-test. And sometimes if you got that and you whack that door about midway, Boom. You can jumpstart those motors. Well, but he said it fell down. Well, so, I know. I'm yeah, not okay. talking about that situation, right. but I'm, I'm pretty much a fourth of the cars on the roads have a window that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. And you're right. You, can, you know, They don't do anything. You just get that thing a good solid wrap and they start working. Sometimes the customer looks at you. That's a parking lot check. Like, oh. <laughs> for sure. Thanks so much for the call, Connor. We're going to go with uh, Brett in Surprise. He's got a 2008 Honda Odyssey with a grinding noise. Brett, I hope you're prepared to make that noise for us. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Um, I got something that's annoying. Uh, it's My wife drives the van all the time, and the last week, while the van is running and t- in park, she heard a grinding noise and seen a little smoke come out, and then it would stop. And also, the battery is dying overnight. Even if I jump it and put a charger on it, it's dying overnight. And I tested the alternator output, and it seems to be good. It's running between 13 and a half and 14 pretty consistently. But it dies every night, and I can't reproduce the grinding noise. Did the grinding noise, was that just a one-time event? Uh, she's had it happen to her three times now. And I've <laughs> even gone so far as to ask her to video it so I can see what's going on. But... All she hears is the grinding and, and some a little bit of smoke coming out, and then she shuts the van off and starts it again, and it's fine. Well, you know, all wires have smoke in them. Because you're getting them back into <laughs> just, the wire is tough. It's, yeah, it's just once you let that smoke out of the wire, it, it's a problem. You know, I would be leaning towards we have an alternator issue. 13 volts out of an alternator doesn't necessarily mean it's working properly. It's producing some voltage, but what you really need is amperage. The thing's got to recharge the battery and, and, and put all the power back into that battery and provide power for the windows, the air conditioner, the fan motor, the electric fuel pump, all of those things. The smoke really concerns me a little bit. I mean, we're not going to have a big car fire or anything, but I would be leaning or looking towards an alternator. You might be able to get your nose down there and take a whiff of that thing. Smell and it. it. smells mm. like that burnt electrical smell. And also you when know? you see that rusty brown-looking color, sometimes you can tell the bearing is going bad mm-hmm. you yeah. know, in front of that alternator. Yeah, the alternator. But I, I, I'm leaning towards the alternator. I would be surprised on the Honda that the battery light doesn't come on. You know, that's one where everybody says, oh, I need a battery. The battery light's on. Yeah, right. It's never the battery. It's the alternator. I wonder if he's also got a key off draw. You know, something's drawing the battery down overnight. That's a possibility. Well, if it's got a bad diode or maybe something smoked in the alternator, the regulator burned up or something happened, now it's shorting, so it is is creating a draw possibly. That's going to be, we're going to have to do a charging system test. We used to call it a VAT test. That was the name of the machine, our ARPST, Alternator Regular Battery Starter Test. Wow, that's yeah. a pretty good acronym. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. If he hasn't seen the smoke, and he hasn't heard the noise. Maybe his wife just wants a new car. But it's got Poss- a dead battery. She's probably leaving the dome light on overnight. Possibility. Could be. 602-277-5827. Oh, here we go, Dave. 602-277-KTR. And at, we dusted this thing off this morning. It's time for Fact or 
Fiction. You know, I wanted to play it so bad, but I forgot to think of a fact or fiction. What is the fact or fiction for today, Matt? I don't know. Is it lost in your paperwork, Dave? <laughs> it fact is. or fiction. Dave is prepared for the fact or fiction. All right. This one, this one actually, <laughs> this one actually comes out of an email because someone thought they were being taken advantage of here. So the fact or fiction: a bad power steering pump can cause your car to overheat. Fact or fiction, Matt? Why are you looking at me? Because I, I hope you know the answer to this. <laughs> Sounds crazy to me. I mean, how the heck is a power steering pump going to make the car overheat? I mean, is, is the belt loose or is it leaking on the belt? I know the answer, Dave. I know you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just I told it up a little bit because you told me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> on some cars, not that many, Toyota and Lexus come to mind, and I think that was the brand of the car. The radiator fan is a hydraulic-driven fan. It is not driven by the belt. And it is not driven by electricity. It's not an electric fan motor. The power steering fluid goes through the system, and the fan runs off the power steering fluid. So very likely to be fact. Very much a fact. Well, at these emails, we see them. They come through, and people are like, ah, what is this shop doing? They're totally cheating me. And that's the number one thing we have on the show. The rules have changed. And so it sounds crazy. It's like there's a... There is now a clutch on your alternator. Yeah. You know, and the first time they want to sell me a new clutch on my alternator. What the heck are they talking about a clutch on the alternator? Yes, alternators have clutches on them. We were talking about this morning, Dave. The overwhelming majority of people, and then the overwhelming of people, the overwhelming majority of people that own repair shops do not wake up in the morning and figure out they're not their plan is not to how can i pick someone's pocket today <laughs> well this so. is what this is what the customer thinks uh you using the whole fist doc I mean, <laughs> they just don't know what right. to do with it so when we come back we're taking phone calls at 602-277-5827 you're listening to matt and dave your ktr car guys on bumper to bumper radio trust it's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that'll help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. All right, Dave. We have got a board loaded up with some phone calls. A few minutes left. And we are going to blast through these phone calls. So if you're out there listening and just tune in, I'm Matt. He's Dave. And we're helping you with your car. So pay attention. We're going to blast through, starting with Mike in Glendale on his Mitsubishi Outlander. What's going on, Mike? Well, it's uh, annoying and concerning, both. Um, Actually, it's a brand-new car, less than 500 miles on it. And um, as soon as you crank it up, throughout the whole operation, 
you got that lifter cap. Constantly doesn't go away. Check the oil. Everything's fine. Is this a byproduct of the new synthetic oils that they're running or something that we should actually go back to the dealer and have it checked out? Does this sound odd to you with a brand new car? Uh, it does, Dave. Go. I would be a little concerned. I would I would go back there. It's so new. And then, and then see if you're – show them yours making the noise and then go to another Outlander 2015 and see if it makes the same noise because a lot of times, oh, that's normal. That'll just wear in. Well, prove it to me that it's normal. Yeah, it, I, I want to see that that's normal. But I would be concerned 500 miles on it. Man, I just spent a lot of money on this baby. Yeah, you want to get that. And when you go in with that, don't just have them say, oh, yeah, it's normal. Uh, check back next week. No, write a work order, document the mileage, put it in, and let's memorialize this. So when you just come out of warranty or something else goes haywire down the road, they say, well, you never told us about it. So that and say, show me the other ones that do it. Thanks for the call, Mike. We're going to go with Adriana in Scottsdale on a 2008 Jeep Wrangler. How's it going, Adriana? I hope you meant Ariana, Dave. Ariana has a Jeep Wrangler. Hi. <laughs> oh, Ariana. Oh, boy. Pascal's up to something. I know yeah. you might have an annoying problem with your Jeep, but I know you might have an annoying dad ride next to you, too. Maybe. <laughs> um, so we brought, uh, we just bought brand new. Um, brakes and they're very squeaky. What do we do? What do you turn do? up the radio? This sounds like a planted call to me. I don't know, Dave. It does. What you do? Um, you just take it to a better shop to do your brake job. They're not. They're not <laughs> oh, supposed we, to squeak, Ariana. So. In the old days, we we live with squeaking and brakes aren't perfect, but they'll squeak every now and then. You know. In, but, well, and Ari, the other thing you do is you tell your dad to quit working on cars in his garage. That's why they never get fixed right. So <laughs> thanks for the call. Who's next, Dave? Uh, we are going to go with, looks like, Hartman. Am I saying that right? Am I reading that right? 03 Chevy Silverado. What's annoying for you? Thanks, guys, for taking my call. i got a question for you. I've got 175,000 miles on my Silverado. It's got the six-cylinder engine in it. And, of course, this thing had a bad cluster gear, which they all did. I had it repaired. Well, not short long after that, especially now since it's getting hot. When I pull up to a stoplight, I get a low oil pressure signal across my dash. Mm-hmm. No noises. So there's no and t- n- no ticking, nothing out of the engine? Just Nothing the, just... out of the engine, just the annoying beeping that the oil pressure is low. Okay. Um, I changed the oil pressure or the oil weight on my next oil when I did my last oil change. Now, when I've talked to people, some are telling me to go with 2050. Ooh, no. Um, some are telling me that it's the O rings and the um, suction tubes off the oil pump that's causing it. Um, I I don't know if I should be concerned or not because I've let it sit in the driveway idling at 10 minutes with that light on and the beeping, and nothing happens. I never hear a noise. Dave's pointing. He wants to give you an answer. Well, I would like to know, first of all, is that gauge getting accurate information from the engine before we go making decisions as far as, you know, you got to get a little blood work done before we just go, you know, eh, take a lot of extra of this and some of these and call me in the morning. There's more science to it. And very well, we could just have a bad sending unit on the engine for the for the gauge. So I would be checking that first. Well, he re- he think he said he replaced it. No, so. he said he replaced the cluster. The actual- no, he had the cluster replaced once before. Well, anyway, whatever he did. But we need to find out if the engine actually has oil pressure. I think that's where you're going with that. That's where I'm going with it. And I wouldn't necessarily just go changing engine oil viscosities and all no. that stuff. I mean, that's not – I mean, that engine was designed for – it's a, probably a 530 motor. 2003, I would imagine. Yeah, 2050, you'll blow the crank seal out of it or something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like shoving peanut butter through a bunch of small passages. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want to do that. So you want to get a mechanic. you got to get somebody to get a gauge hooked up to the car and actually have a mechanical oil pressure test done while the car is doing those conditions. And, and I mean, gosh, you could have a, a, a BCM problem. That's a body control module. There's all kinds of things that could interfere with that. And, and you, maybe you really don't have an engine problem, but you don't want to assume that you don't. Right. Thanks so much for the call. And also, we didn't have any noise, and that's what I was looking, what I was listening for. So we're going to go with Mike in Phoenix. He's got an O2 Dodge Ram. How can we help you, Mike? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Uh, yeah, I've got this O2 uh, Dodge Ram. Uh, day before yesterday, my uh, girlfriend was driving it. Uh, she said that it started to kind of sputter a little bit while she was driving. Um, then it started to get close to overheating. Uh, she drove it for maybe about a half a mile and then pulled over. Uh, I went through and I found that my, uh, it's like the, uh, uh, return for the, uh, heater 
the 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 tube to coming out of the uh, the engine uh, had blown. So I changed that tube out and uh, refilled my uh, my radiator and everything. And now the truck is running. It stays cool, but it's still kind of sputtering. Um, before this happened, you know, before the whole heating issue, or I should say the, the radiator got an issue had happened, um, it was running just fine. Hmm. Well, Dave, again, you. Well, I, anytime I hear about a car getting hot, so it sounds like we had a blown heater hose or a heater hose that sprung a leak. So this thing definitely overheated. If she uh-huh. saw it, if she saw it getting hot on the gauge, you know, they don't. The gauge doesn't always go up as much as it's getting hot. So I'm I'm afraid that it's a possibility, and I need to be verified and diagnosed and all that stuff. But maybe we did some damage to the head gasket. Maybe we did some damage, but I'm going to go the other direction, and I'm got my fingers crossed for Mike. Maybe when that heater hose blew, got it shot water right. every everywhere. It got the dis- distributor cap on a 2002 I don't know maybe it got the plug wires wet it got the distributor soaking in in water and that's causing it to misfire but maybe what you do tonight if you're after you're done driving the car you park it for the day go out tonight let it warm up get it to operating temperature make sure that the rate or you can do that today make sure the radiator is holding pressure by squeezing the hose and never 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 open a hot radiator by the way if that thing will hold pressure and build up to the 16 pounds that it should park it tonight let it sit overnight. If it's got a blown head gasket, that pressure in the radiator might just push a little bit of water into the cylinders. And when you start it first thing in the morning, if it misfires for just you know 15 seconds and you start getting some steam out the tailpipe, that might be an indication that you have a blown head gasket, water in the cylinder. We can do a simple block test at any shop and, and, and usually be really darn accurate whether that's that's blown just using some chemical and for anyone that's listening I, I think we can all learn from this phone call nothing ruins a car quicker than overheating in an engine so that's not one of those things where you're just gonna hey I'm just gonna I'm gonna nurse it up to the auto shop if uh, if you got if you got a car that's overheating and you're in a safe place just pull the heck over I mean it's 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 just gonna cost you a tow and a tow could be 50 bucks could be 150 bucks if you got towing with your insurance company, it's not going to cost you anything to pull over, and it's not going to be worth the two to five thousand dollar repair, you know, and even worse on some cars. So don't don't keep driving. Summertime's coming, you know, and and I always tell my customers, if it's a hundred degrees out and you haven't seen us, you haven't had your regular checkup, we need to be looking at that stuff. You don't need to go replacing hoses just because the car's got 60,000 miles on it. It's eight years old. Let's look and make sure, let's prevent those problems this year. Well, Carrie and Marco, we're going to get you here off the air. Thanks for calling. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bree, for running the dials. If you're looking for a friendly, honest, competent shop, you can find them at BumperToBumperRadio.com. Remember never to text and drive. See you next week. Ever wonder how the people that built those old castles kept the rain out? I don't think they did. But let's face it, your home is your castle. And you can protect it because you have Keiko roofing on your side and on your roof. But don't wait for an emergency. Those other castles have been around for hundreds of years. If your roof is more than 10 years old, you really should have the trusted professionals at Keiko give you a free roof checkup today. Flat, foam, tile, or shingles, Keiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Keiko has you covered. And when you invite Keiko up on your roof for that free checkup, if you don't need anything done, they'll tell you. That's the kind of trust that results in half of Keiko's business coming from referrals or repeat customers. Call 602-944-4600 or check keikoroofing.com for all the rest, including financing options. Keiko Roofing, they're crazy about quality. Hi, Jerry Colangelo inviting you back to 1965 as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Gold and Patriot courses at the historic Wigwam Resort. Our celebration kicks off this Memorial Day weekend with Bunker to Bunkers, Throwback with Bunkerville Golf Tournament, benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Fighter Country Partnership. The two-person scramble is loaded with special throwback prizes, lunch, and a coupon for a free second round of golf, all for just $82. Room specials start as low as $110 per night. Register today at BunkerGolf.com. Join us for everything automotive on Bumper to Bumper Radio with Dave Riccio and Matt Allen, the KTAR Car Guys, every Saturday, 11 to noon on KTAR News, 92.3 FM. Spring is here, but big, bad summer's just around the corner. Join us this Saturday for the top 10 tips to prepare your car for the heat. And remember, 24-7, there's bumper-to-bumper